All right, guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be discussing how to burn the bootloader onto a blank at mega chip. I know I'm pointing at an Arduino that's missing it. So the whole point of this video is so that way you know how to replace your at megas if you damage them to keep your Arduino Uno going and also on how to just burn that bootloader onto it if you want to have a project that's not in the board and you just have a blank chip that you want to use that way you can just use that regular arduino settings and just go through with the bootloader anyways because you know you you don't have to use it you can uh compile that sketch and actually manually program them but eh, that's besides the point when you're doing a project most people want to just stick in that bootloader and makes it easy for them so that's what we're going to cover in this video is how to do it and we're going to do it three different ways so the first way i'm going to show is using one of these mini pro programmers the reason why i want to start out with this is i haven't really seen very many videos of anybody showing how to do this and these mini pro programmers are a very useful piece of kit if you don't already have them because they support a ton of different eproms a couple of microcontrollers. There's not a lot of microcontrollers supported by it. Um, and it also supports testing TTL logic. So very useful if you're in the electronics repair world. But you know, if you're just a hobbyist, you're probably just gonna use a second Arduino to program it. Now I'm holding one that does have an Atmega seated in it, but that one's blank. I haven't programmed it yet. It's for this video. So what I'll be using is one of the smaller Arduinos, the uh, Arduino Nano. Uh, so we'll be using an Arduino Nano to put the bootloader onto an Arduino Uno. Um, and we'll be using a Mini Pro. And then I'll also show you doing it where you're using, again, I'll probably use the Nano. Maybe I'll use the Uno because I'll have the Uno programmed at that point in time. Um, and I'll show you how to program them in a breadboard. So you'll get all three different versions. Um, I'll probably put some timestamps down in the description so that way if you just want to skip to whichever various way you want to do it. Um, and also I'll have a link in the description for the mini pros on Amazon. Yes, I get a affiliate link out of it, but uh, I will be linking to a newer version of it. They no longer sell this one. I mean, there are companies that still sell this one, but they're counterfeits. Uh, I would recommend just sticking with, uh, but yeah, the newer ones, they still support all the stuff the old ones do but there's just more supported. They, they support um, uh, a lot more TTL logic than these did, uh, and a significantly larger number of microcontrollers are supported by the newer ones too. So uh, I will have links in the description for that. But yeah, let's get right into this. We're gonna start with the Mini Pro, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so for burning your bootloader, the main, the, the first thing you gotta do is locate where the bootloaders are on your computer. So whatever folder you installed Arduino onto, it'll be under the hardware, then Arduino, then AVR, then bootloaders, and you want the OptiBoot uh, bootloaders that you're gonna use. And so this is the particular bootloader we need to use. So I went ahead and opened up the Mini Pro software and got it loaded in there. And this is what it'll look like. So it'll start at this address where you'll start to see stuff. Now, that's all you need to do for loading it into Mini Pro, but you do need to go set your fuses. So go to the configuration, and this is how you want your fuses set for the Arduino uh, bootloader. If you don't set it this way, it won't work properly. And by default, it's not set this way. So let's go ahead and now program this onto the device. Okay, and we have successfully programmed it. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this thing a quick test here. So let's go ahead and click upload. There we go, now it works. So, uh, yep, and we just uploaded the blink sketch just out of the examples and you can see it's blinking. So that's all we have to do to get that to work. And we can try uploading the sketch to this one, which is blank. And let's see what we get out of that. So this should be a different COM port. Yep, this is COM port seven. All right, upload. And it's just going to forever try to upload to it because it doesn't have the bootloader burnt to it. Okay, so now we are going to program the Arduino Uno with another Arduino Uno. So right now I got pulled up on the screen here, the how to wire it up. So I'm actually gonna show you how to wire it because just follow the instructions there. You're gonna see it better in the picture than you will here. 
Uh, I will put this into the description too. I'll put the link to this uh, article from Arduino themselves. So they show you how to use uh, a couple of the different Arduinos as the programmer and the target. So what they're showing in this example is you go into file, go to examples, and then go to Arduino ISP and click that. That's the sketch right here. And then you're going to upload it to your working uh, Arduino Uno. So that's how you're going to be able to use this burn bootloader feature, but you first have to uh, set up one of your Arduinos as this. So this requires having at least two Arduinos to do it. And you can use a Arduino Nano, which was what I was originally planning on using, but since I already programmed a um, uh, an Uno, I'll just use the Uno to program another Uno. So let's go ahead and upload this sketch here. So we have our Arduino Uno and our boards in Arduino Uno. So let's go ahead and upload it. Okay, so it is uploading now and we are done uploading. So we've uploaded it. So now we'll be able to wire this into that and plug it in, power it up and program it. I just didn't want to have both program plugged in at the same time while I was doing that. So I didn't have to figure out which one was which. All right, so in this video, we're going to get to go into another rabbit hole that I wasn't expecting to go down, uh, but it doesn't really shock me. I just figured Arduino was set up to go ahead and just program either of these the same way. So, okay, whatever. So problem I'm running into is um, I was only able to purchase at Mega 328s. I could not get 328Ps because of the chip shortage and they were out of stock from the distributor I was buying from at the time. They may be back in stock and I'm sure they were in stock with other distributors. I was just ordering stuff from this particular one. So I ordered it at the same time, but they were out of stock at the time. So I had to get the regular 328. The only difference in the 328 and the 328 P is the P is it stands for like Pico power or something like that. It's uh, it's more energy efficient. It's better for battery and solar powered projects. That's about it. You know, it's the only difference in the two. They both work the same and have the same performance. Just one is more energy efficient. So couldn't get the energy efficient ones. So now Arduino does not like the fact that I'm giving it a regular 328 instead of a 328p, so it will not program it. So we get to go down this rabbit hole of going into the AVR dude configuration and just lying to it about what chip we're giving it. So I just need to change this to one four and it should work. So we'll just go ahead and save that. All right, so now with that change, it should work. I may have to restart Arduino though. I don't know if it references this every time. So let's go ahead and try to burn bootloader. And there we go. We are successfully burning the bootloader. So we should now have the bootloader on there. Well, we definitely do. Now I need to see if it's going to successfully lie back to it about uh, what it is, or if I have to leave that config file set that way. Um, but I don't know, maybe, we'll see. We'll, we'll just go ahead and put the config file back to the way it should be. So let me do that real quick and see if it will let me write a sketch to that um, with it. It may give that same error, so I don't know. We're working through this, so let's take a look. I already switched my config file back to how it's supposed to be, so that way it is looking for the correct one when it's doing it, just that way I don't have to keep going back and forth or I don't forget that I changed that config file. So I went ahead and set it back. Let's go ahead and upload it and verify that we can still upload to it because we shouldn't be able to upload to it. Uh, but I've already verified it and we can. We shouldn't. It should still tell it which I see it is, but because you burnt this bootloader on here, uh, it asks the bootloader, what are you? And the bootloader tells it it's something different than it is. So let's go ahead and upload it and we will go take a look at what it says now. Now that it's uploading and we go through and see now it responds with zero F instead of responding with the one four. Uh, that, so once you upload that new um, file in there, or, once you upload that new bootloader, it now lies about what I see it is. Um, I, I knew this one 
was going to lie about the IC because I, I didn't change any settings in the stuff when I did it. I didn't know for a fact if this one would. So it will, in fact, lie to Arduino IDE and say that it is a 328P once you program it. So uh, we don't have to leave that config file changed. I wasn't sure about that, but that now lets you, that that explains to you how to do this. So we went right into an interesting roadblock doing this. Okay, so this last one that I'm going to do here is not actually burning the bootloader. It's how to skip burning the bootloader and just program it directly. Um, so you set it up exactly the same. You wire it up as if you're going to burn the bootloader. So you need one Arduino set up as a Arduino programmer with that uh, sketch on there. And then you just need to be wired into your project exactly how you would to burn the bootloader. But instead of burning the bootloader, we're just going to program it via programmer. So we're going to use upload using programmer instead of burn bootloader. Like, yeah, we could burn the bootloader right here, but we're not. We're going to upload using programmer. So you do that and it's going to run through the whole thing. There we go. It's now flashing it and lots of little pretty lights there and we're done. So that's how you program that. And again, that's wiring it exactly the same. Uh, I just used the Nano this time because I said I was gonna use the Nano in here and I ended up using the Uno. So uh, I, I used the Nano this time just to show that, hey, the Nano is capable of doing it. You upload that same, uh, the example sketch of uh, Arduino ISP to that and then you are capable of using it the same way I used the Uno. And again, it's just, you're going to be using pin 10, it's 10 through 13 on there. And then on your other one, you're going to be using pin 10, I'm uh, sorry, you're going to be using pin 11 through 13, and then you're going to have the reset pin. Uh, with your projects like this, you don't have to have that five volt line connected if you're using a separate power supply and you just have to power it that way. Uh, so I, I rarely ever put the five volt on my headers that I use for them. I probably should because then it make programming them easier, but I'm always worried that I'll have too much of a load on my five volt rail for uh, using an Arduino to program it and stuff. Um, but I do generally with my Arduino projects continue to pro well, not nah, my at mega projects continue to program them through the Arduino IDE afterwards and stuff. Um, I'll just do using programmer instead of bootloader and, and the advantage for doing that, the advantage for skipping the bootloader and not having that installed on there is it's faster. So like you instantly are running your program instead of it running the bootloader then running the program so that's that's the point of this and really once you get off the once you're no longer doing the development board once you're in your own circuit board you should do it this way um yeah it's a couple more wires you have to wire up to to program it because you have to do that whole spi connection uh because that's always what it is uh it's spi um because once you do program the bootloader, then all that you need is you'll need RXTX, reset, and um, uh, ground, uh, I believe. So it's like two less wires, but I mean, I don't know. I To me, this this makes sense once you get to this point in your project. Yeah, I lied. I showed two ways of lo loading the bootloader and then one way of skipping the bootloader altogether. And when you skip the bootloader, you can still program it in uh, Mini, uh, Mini Pro also. So um, you, you just export your, your binary. So um, to do that, you would do export compiled binary, which is right underneath um, to upload using the programmer. So that's always what you'd have to do there. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Yeah, I got a cover up the old sponsor that there, there's a, a different company underneath here under my finger that used to sponsor the channel but now one of their competitors sponsors the channel so i probably shouldn't uh show their logo um but yeah so uh i wanted to show this circuit board just so you knew what i was using here uh this is just that uh at mega 328 pu uh so this is the um it's the exact same thing as an arduino nano uh sitting on this circuit board 
Uh, I just, I used this for that example, just because I was tired of having to go back and forth, changing the configuration of AVR dude for programming these. Yeah. Once you, once you program it, um, it puts in the bootloader that it's the other one. If you actually go ping the chip using, uh, the, uh, mini pro, it still responds as the correct chip, I guess, Arduino when it thinks it's talking to a bootloader, it just asks the bootloader, uh, what chip are you instead of uh, identifying the chip properly. So I don't know. I don't know why it works that way. I don't know how it works that way. Uh, I don't really care. Um, it's, it's one of those, I could look it up for the gee whiz fact of knowing, but I don't care. It doesn't change. It just really doesn't change anything for me. But yeah, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, this is a old project. Um, if you saw this and was just interested in what the heck it was, uh, it was a project that I was working on for GagePod. I ended up uh, going a little bit smaller and using an STM32 on it. And I, I was gonna sell the rights to the project to somebody. Uh, that's never come to fruition on selling it. Oh, here's a completed one sitting here. Um, so yeah, this is what the finished product looked like. Uh, since they never did buy the rights to it from me, I'll probably do a video here eventually. Um, I need to fix a couple of things on the board. Uh, it, it's like pretty much there, but it has a couple of little problems. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'll, um, I'll probably do a new video on well, that. Yeah, this will be the next video. Who This is the new sponsor to the channel. So I can show the logo on this one. Well, it's not really the logo, it's just their name, JLC PCB. Um, but uh, yeah, this is going to be the next video. So um, be looking for this early next week and uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.